Hello, everyone. My name is Stacy Hodge, producer of Learning Experiences at the National Restaurant Association show, and I would like to thank you all for participating in this webinar titled Take Back the Lunch Break with Tort. Before we get started, I'd like to cover a few logistics for the webinar. We will take questions throughout the webinar between presentations as well as at the end. In your GoToWebinar control panel, you'll see a questions window where you can type your questions at any time. We will do our best to answer as many questions as possible before we conclude. If your question is not addressed, we will follow up via email with our speakers to provide a response. Your feedback is very important, and we will send a brief evaluation at the conclusion of the webinar. We ask that you take a few minutes to provide your feedback and suggestions on topics that you would like us to consider as we develop future programs. You'll also receive an email with a link to view the on-demand recording of this webinar this week. And we would certainly like to thank our sponsor for today's webinar, TORC. Their support of programs like these providing valuable information and resources to the industry is incredibly important. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce our speakers. Joining us is Suzanne Cohen, the Marketing Segment Director for Food Service at Ethity. Her background in food service marketing, brand building, and identifying actionable consumer insights that drive growth have made partnerships with strategic accounts impactful. She is passionate about ensuring that the patron experience is safe, hygienic, and exceptional in that order. Joining Suzanne, we have Chelsea Robinson, who is the social media lead for Honey Grow, a fast casual restaurant that brings people together over wholesome and simple foods. Her passion for storytelling, background in content creation, and extensive hospitality experience come together to grow and continually engage Honey Grow's social audiences. Rounding out our presentation, we have Skylar Bouchard, who is a food blogger, host, and entrepreneur from Wilmington, Delaware. She is the founder of Dining with Skylar, where her mission is to discover a new taste anywhere from her kitchen to a five-star restaurant in Midtown or a Chinese food mall in Hong Kong. Skylar works with restaurants around the country as a menu consultant, food stylist, and social media expert to help them gain traction in the online sphere. And so at this time, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Suzanne to begin our presentation. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar. My name is Suzanne Cohen, and I'm the Marketing Director of Food Service of Torque, an ethnicity brand that makes one out of every two food service napkins across the country. Today, I'm here to talk about an issue that I'm sure many of you are experiencing in your own restaurants, the decline of lunchtime traffic. According to the Wall Street Journal, going out for lunch has become a dying tradition. And with almost two thirds of employees opting to eat lunch at their desk, this trend has taken a major toll on restaurants. This got us thinking, how can restaurants continue to turn a profit when the lunch crowd they traditionally rely on no longer shows up for lunch? We know that this trend of neglecting to take a lunch break has been growing across the country, and we wanted to do something to help. That's when we developed the idea for Take Back the Lunch Break, the only movement designed to solve the root of declining lunchtime traffic. I'm joined here today by Chelsea Robinson, social media lead from Honeygrow, an East Coast-based chain specializing in wholesome stir fries, salads, and more, along with Skylar Bouchard, the founder and CEO of Dining with Skylar, a lifestyle blog. Before we get started, here's an overview of what we'll discuss today. We'll begin with a summary of our program, Take Back the Lunch Break, which has been applauded for helping ignite social change and improving workplaces across America while positively impacting our customers' business. Then you'll hear from Chelsea from Honeygrow about how Take Back the Lunch Break showcased Honeygrow's business, and then from Skylar about how her followers, young professionals, responded to the campaign. Then we'll discuss how we dove deeper into the lunch break dilemma to determine how it impacts the largest generation in the U.S., millennials, Skylar will also walk us through some social media best practices to engage the millennial audience. Then we'll let you know how you can get involved in this year's Take Back the Lunch Break Day on Friday, June 21st. At the end of the webinar, 
you'll walk away with tangible steps you can take to bring take back the lunch break to your own restaurant. And then we'll take time for your questions in the end. We developed the award-winning movement, Take Back the Lunch Break, when we noticed the trend of declining lunchtime revenue, paired with the fact that people were taking fewer and shorter lunch breaks. We also knew that employee engagement has hit an all-time low. According to the Gallup poll, only one in three employees feel engaged at work. Because engagement impacts productivity, happiness, and job satisfaction, we realized that not taking a lunch break was taking a major toll on workers across America. It was also having an impact on many restaurants' businesses. As a company that has always been passionate about helping our customers improve their business, we thought, well, what can we do about this? So to get to the root of the problem, we conducted a study of 1,600 workers and managers in various workplaces in the U.S. and Canada those who take lunch breaks and those who do not to determine the current state of the lunch break. Why do people take or not take them? How do they feel when they do or don't? What we found is that employees are hesitant to take a full lunch break, and when they do, it's often for less than 30 minutes. This is because many people feel judged about taking a lunch break and are worried about whether doing so will make his or her boss or coworkers think poorly of them. In fact, our research showed that people don't feel encouraged to take a lunch break and are worried that if they do, they may not be perceived as a hard worker. We also found that people who do take lunch breaks are actually more likely to be efficient and satisfied with their job. Our research showed there's a strong desire among employees to take a lunch break. As you can see here, the majority of North American workers want to take longer lunch breaks and almost 90% of people said their ability to take a lunch break is an important factor when they're considering a new job. It's no surprise because employees who take a regular lunch break are more likely to report feeling as effective and as efficient as they would like. We knew that with this data, we had something really big on our hands, and we wanted to create a huge rallying moment for employees to come together across America and take back the lunch breaks that they all deserve. So we established the third Friday in June, which this year will take place on Friday, June 21st, as National Take Back the Lunch Break Day. However, this isn't just a message we're trying to spread once a year. We want employees to remember every day is Take Back the Lunch Break Day by encouraging them to step away from their desks and take time to get some fresh air and eat a lunch that will help fuel them for the rest of the day. Because the truth is, the simple act of taking a full lunch break can improve how employees feel about their work and their company. And it can also help restaurants improve their bottom line. We invested heavily on marketing to generate buzz among consumers and drive them to restaurants across the country by emphasizing the health and productivity benefits of taking a regular lunch break, which resonated with restaurants and consumers alike. As you can see here, News of our research spread across the country, and soon people were seeing this wherever they looked. In newspapers, I think I went too fast. In newspapers, online, morning TV segments, and even in the office elevator TVs. Across all the news coverage we secured, it's estimated that news about this campaign was seen 264.5 million times. We had people's attention, and they were excited. By leading a conversation about the decline of the lunch break and keeping a pulse on consumer behaviors that affect our customers, Take Back the Lunch Break shed light on the importance of taking time for lunch to come back feeling refreshed and reinvigorated for the rest of the day. Getting customers interested in eating lunch was only the start. We know that in today's crowded marketplace, it's not enough to just serve a meal. Restaurants need to show an active interest in aspects of a customer's life and community to stand apart from the competition. So as your partner, we took a close look at your customers and created eye-catching graphics designed to capture attention. We want to help you show you care about your customer's well-being beyond just a satisfied stomach. We created images for you to use both on-premise and online with messaging tailored directly to your customers. For example, an infographic outlining our social result, our survey results, which you can easily post on your website and social media channels. As you can see, it's very eye-catching, and we've seen restaurants feature this on their website as a did you know. 
social media images, which feature survey statistics and call your customers to action with the hashtag take back lunch. We've all seen, seen restaurants take this into their own hands by creating their own social media posts and even giveaway, giveaways and contests using the hashtag. Customized express nap templates, highlighting lunch break benefits with fun, engaging visuals and witty messages. You can download, print, and display these in express nap, napkin dispensers to reach customers when they dine. Plus, you can update the graphics with your own brand logo to proudly claim your stake in the lunch break mission. In particular, displaying these messages both on-premise and online can help you engage with customers long after they've left your establishment. If you're interested in learning an easy way to do so, come visit our booth during the National Restaurant Association show or visit our website, torfusa.com. All of these images and more are free to you to use and can be downloaded at torfusa.com take back lunch. We've talked about how we capture the nation's attention, but now I want to bring things closer to home with a case study for you. Torque is headquartered in Philadelphia, and so is one of our valued customers, Honeygrow. Last year, we joined forces to bring the lunch break movement to our hometown and celebrate Take Back the Lunch Break Day in style. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Chelsea Robinson. Chelsea, as our partner during our launch year, can you tell us what made Honeygrow interested in working with us for this initiative and how it was meaningful for your brand? Thank you, Suzanne. So like Suzanne mentioned, we partnered with Torque to host the first ever Take Back a Lunch Break Day. It was so exciting to bring this to our hometown, particularly because we're always looking for ways to connect with our community and bring more than just delicious food to our customers. As Suzanne mentioned, the goal was to get employees away from their desks, head outdoors, and take their coworkers with them to enjoy lunch together. This was a day of celebration. So as a special treat, we decided to offer free lunches to the first 100 people who showed up at our Honey Grow location, enticing workers to actually leave their desk and grab a friend to go with them. First, we created a Facebook event and spread the word on our Twitter and Instagram pages to ramp up the excitement. We also spread the news by alerting local Philly reporters who wrote articles announcing our special promotion and spreading awareness about this special day. On the day of, people started lining up outside our doors nearly a half or nearly an hour before lunchtime. They were all taking pictures and getting excited for their lunch on a sunny Friday afternoon. This was great because customers were sharing their experiences during a lunch break in real time and encouraging their own followers to join in on the fun. And throughout the event, we live tweeted, we shared Instagram stories to get people curious, so they drop by and see what the buzz was all about. We also decorated our store with Take Back the Lunch Break posters featuring survey statistics and took photos of our customers holding Take Back the Lunch signs. We even got creative and customized our napkins to spread the word. These creative touches were very effective to draw in the crowds and news spread like wildfire. The event was a huge success and newspapers and TV stations across Philly were spreading the word, raising awareness about the Take Back the Lunch Break mission. Take Back the Lunch Break Day was the perfect way to get valuable face-to-face -face time with diners and give them the proper lunch break they deserve. It was a ton of fun and we learned a lot about our customers, what matters to them, and how to reach them in a meaningful way. Thank you, Chelsea. We're, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're excited. Sorry. Uh, thanks, Chelsea. We're excited to see what this will bring our restaurant customers and their customers this year. Now, while this was happening in Philly, Skyler was taking New York by storm, one French fry at a time. Skyler, can you tell us a little bit about what you do and how Take Back the Lunch Break resonated with your followers? Definitely. I'm so sorry I jumped in. I got so excited because I this Take Back the Lunch Day is such a near and dear cause to my heart. So a little more info about me. Um, I'm the founder of Dining with Skylar, a food blog where I identify some of the latest food trends and I also share my adventures with over 175,000 people. Um, I also am a Food Network host and I do hosting with Amazon and I, I just dabble a lot in the food space. Food has always been my number one love. Um, the main reason I started this whole blog was to showcase different dining adventures and, and to have people watch me experience different cuisines and try out different restaurants across the country. So like Suzanne mentioned, people have limited time and money to go out and eat. So they do rely, I'd like to think they rely, <laughs> they, I'd like to think they rely on me to keep them updated on the best place they can go. 
Um, my followers range from 18 to 44 years old. The majority falls between 25 to 34. The young, career-hungry customers that you know I relate to and that you're probably looking for. These individuals seem to live by the work hard, play hard mentality, um, but there's really only one problem. The work has taken over the fun, you guys. And I, I live this truth, so it's, it's definitely, it's very valid statement. And this is where the take back the lunch break comes in. Um, when I first heard about take back the lunch break, like I said, I love this cause. It was really near and dear to my heart. I was so excited because I knew this message would resonate very strongly, not only with me, but with my followers. We can all relate to the reality of what has become the sad desk lunch salad. Yeah, I, if you don't know what that is, then you're living a great life because I honestly was scared to take my lunch break for so long because when I worked at a normal job in college, I was so scared. I thought people would judge me. I was embarrassed. I thought that was me like leaving work, but it's really not. And as anyone can tell from my posts, I love food. And lunchtime is actually my favorite part of the day. This is not only because I have to go on lunch shoots as it's part of my job, which is you know, really great, um, but because it's my time to reflect, to refuel, to power up my mind and keep going with my day. Um, I also realized that posts generally perform better when I'm in the frame enjoying food myself or with a friend. So that really um, is what comes from my lunchtime shoots. And if I ever posted a lunch rush at my desk, that would just not translate well, you know? So Take Back the Lunch Break really inspired me because it was all about uniting together and changing this lunch break status quo. As an influencer and food blogger, my goal is to get my followers engaged with one another and myself on a shared interest or passion in their lives, whether it's work, play, or of course food, which I think falls into both of those. Um, so the decline of the lunch break isn't just true for nine to five jobs. Like I said, I remember feeling really scared when I was in my college jobs to take my lunch break. I was so scared. I didn't want people to think I wasn't dedicated or that I wouldn't get anything done. Um, and even now, like I said, I, I take it for work reasons, but there have been times where I'm a food blogger and I still forget to eat. That is possible, unfortunately. Um, on, t on National Take Back the Lunch Day, I partnered with Shake Shack a Torque restaurant customer, and we set up my own lunch break hour. I documented the whole experience in a, an Instagram story video, and I had an honest heart-to-heart -heart with my followers about this struggle that I had to take back a lunch break. I also asked them to join me on this mission because to me, it's really important for anyone's overall well-being. Um, I, I wanted to drive home that you're not in an alone factor. I wanted people to know that I'm on this journey with them. I don't work a traditional job. But I struggle to take this lunch break. And I know they, like most of my followers probably do too. So social media is really a place to find that reassurance from other people. And it gave me and others the chance to interact with the community. So after where I did this post, soon enough, the comments started pouring in this was one of my highest performing campaigns I've ever worked on. And I've worked on a lot of campaigns. This one is by far my favorite campaign, not only because I love the cause, but it was really fun to do because <laughs> I got to take a lunch break. Um, my Instagram story posts, they had the live footage of me talking directly to followers and also you know, documenting my lunch break, enjoying Shake Shack, which is always a great time. These were seen by over 45,000 people and my post received over 5,000 likes and 250 comments. In particular, the amount of comments on my post really stuck out to me. They were above the average standards in terms of the number of followers and everyone was tagging their friends, asking them to get lunch, saying that they wanna have a lunch break and that they need to do this even though they're so busy at work too. I saw lots of coworkers commenting. It was really, really amazing to see. Um, the, this to me was proof that the lunch break was something people cared about. And it showed me that one, Torque research really did shine a light on a truth that we don't acknowledge. People need breaks, but are too stressed or afraid of judgment to take them. I lived this. I know so many other people lived this too. We fall into this habit of following what others are doing, even if it's not beneficial to us. And someone does need to be that voice of reason. And I think we can all do that together. The second thing I realized is that people don't really understand the true measurable benefits of taking a break. Um, and restaurants can really fill in the gap by sharing this information. 
So whether it's in a napkin dispenser, advertising inserts, or poster displays in stores, you're really spreading that word for customer's benefit and ultimately driving them back through your doors to take a break, which I think is a win-win. I don't see any bad side to this at all. So yeah, that's my experience with the take back the lunch break. And I hope that shed a little bit of light on why I think this is such a great cause and how I think as restaurants, it's great to be involved. Thank you, Skylar. We know that in today's 24 seven work culture, fewer customers are going to restaurants. By encouraging workers to take a lunch break during the workday, we can not only improve job, job satisfaction and productivity, but also bring customers back into your restaurants. This clearly resonated nationwide, and we wanna continue riding the wave. We've got people talking about lunch again, but as our research shows, there's still some doubts about the lunch break. Now is the time to reach your customers while the, with the mission to reclaim their well-deserved lunch break and strike while the iron is hot. Building on last year's survey results, we reanalyzed the 2017 data to pull out new insights we could share with consumers and restaurant operators. As a generation that is highly sought after by many businesses, including restaurants, due to their strong spending power and attractiveness to media, we decided to see how lunch breaks impact the largest generation in the U.S. labor force, millennials. We identified an opportunity to showcase millennial thoughts and feelings about taking a lunch break, which we found in many instances to be more extreme than those of their Gen X and baby boomer counterparts. As you'll see here, the findings dug deeper into millennials' perceptions about taking a lunch break and revealed a general trend toward achieving a greater work-life balance. I'm gonna kick it back to Skylar, who really knows millennials and has some great tips on how to speak their language. Thanks so much, Suzanne. So as we saw earlier, the Take Back the Lunch Break movement really resonated with my audience of all ages. I know we had that median age of 25 to 34, but everyone was participating. Um, but when it comes to millennials and just anyone in general, there are ways that you can make your message really hit home. Social media is very oversaturated with new health ads. So I think it's important that you stay true to yourself in social media, and there are some guidelines I'm gonna give you to help you do that. Um, so to capture your customer's attention and to keep them interested, I have a few tips. The first one is set the scene. What I mean by this is that everything you see on social media is a production, whether it's you know you taking a selfie or me taking this photo at lunch, you're setting that scene and you're conveying a message to your followers through these visuals. Um, so as you can see here on the slide, my Shake Shack post started with one of my favorite meals of the day is lunch and I explained everything in the caption. I also set up my lunch break. I basically set everything up in this photo. So what you don't see is us getting the food, styling the food, making sure everything looked great, and then conveying the happiness that I was feeling in the photo. There's a lot more that goes to it, you guys, instead of just taking a photo. Um, so I, I think when it comes to anything you're trying to do, think about what you're trying to convey and how you would see that visually. If you're trying to show an, someone enjoying you know, their lunch break, then convey that in your images. You know, Maybe even have some of your staff come in and pose with lunch or something like that, but always set the scene. That's the number one thing, because you can't have a photo without a scene. Um, all right, the next thing is to engage your audience. And I say here add a hashtag, but this is always, you know, this is actually a little bit bigger. So always add a hashtag, and but always engage with your followers no matter what. Um, a hashtag is really just a formality in starting a conversation and being able to see other people's responses. So if I click the take back the take back lunch hashtag, I see everyone who participated. But in some cases, the hashtags can be old. So some people might comment, comment as a way of engaging with you or they're gonna DM you. So it's important to respond to all of that and to engage with followers no matter what is going on. Um, but yes, I would say always add a hashtag because it gives that formality to your message and what you're standing for. Something else here is to personalize your message. And I'm, this does not mean you have to post as yourself personally. What I mean by this is that you have to have a really good handle on your messaging and be 
really concise on how you deliver. Um, you can't just like go on and on and on. You have to relate to who's reading it, right? Like you're more likely to engage with a post that you see on social media that has something in it that has to do with you. Like people loved this post because it actually applied to them. And it, it was from one person to another, but they're personally engaging with my message. So once you figure out what your restaurant stands for, personalize it to your restaurant's voice and then make sure it relates to your customers when they're reading it. Um, and then finally, don't forget the call to action. Very important. For this particular post, we did a giveaway. So that was my way of getting followers engaged and everything. They can, they can win a gift card. They get to take back their lunch break. This is the call to action and the incentive drives people wild. Every time I do a giveaway, I get tons of comments and the same thing goes for yours. And it doesn't have to be like your restaurant's giving things away all the time, but think about, you know, we'll repost your photo if you come take a photo of your bowl. Um, if you post 10 photos of your lunch for a month, then you get a free bowl or something like that. Something that doesn't cost a lot, but it's a really great way to get your customers involved. Um, you can get really creative with it, but I think it's a great way to engage with your followers. With that, I think that is everything I hit on, um, but I would make sure to do those things and you'll be great to go with your social media. Thanks, Skylar. Take Back the Lunch Break Day is an opportunity that comes every year, and we want you to join us in celebrating this year's event on June 21st. Starting in June, we're going to challenge everyone to take their lunch break every day for five days and document how refreshed and product productive it makes them feel. This is a great way to get your customers participating in the campaign. We will encourage them to document their stress and anxiety as well as job satisfaction and engagement before they start and chronicle how they feel throughout the challenge. As Skylar mentioned, she will be leading the charge with us this year by spreading the word far and wide to her followers. And we want you to amplify the messaging to your own customers. By applying those social media best practices that we just discussed, you can make this challenge your own. And we'll walk you through just how we do that. Now that we've built up the momentum, there's ample opportunity to drive awareness among your customers and encourage them to join the movement. First, this official day is a perfect excuse to address your customers directly with a reason to come to your establishment. Simply put, it's an invitation to a party you're throwing in the name of lunch. You can offer new meal options, promotions, discounts, and more to honor the day and encourage lunchtime traffic. For example, a buy one, get one free deal will entice people to bring their own, their coworkers and friends along for their meals, driving repeat and new customers to your doors. During the five day Take Back the Lunch Break Challenge, you can offer five day meal giveaways or other prizes to the winners and post about it on social media. Of course, social media is a great tool for spreading news about your Take Back the Lunch Break Day promotions. And in this specific case, changing the current attitudes about taking a lunch break. In a time when everyone's here is missing out, by challenging your customers to use the hashtag TakeBackLunch, you'll direct them to the larger lunch break conversation and generate excitement through the chatter. The celebratory nature of the day and five-day challenge will encourage customers to show their friends and family how they're taking part, snapping pictures and videos of themselves actively taking back lunch to share on their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram channels. The best part, all the buzz between you and your customers, like what you see here, will keep you connected and build the Take Back the Lunch Break community, underscoring your commitment to your customers' well-being. Take Back the Lunch Break Day is clearly a great way to celebrate the Take Back the Lunch movement, but you can do so much more to drive lunchtime traffic every day for your restaurant. We're very excited to back up our restaurant customers with the help they need to take advantage of the lunchtime gap our research uncovered. We're offering a free digital activation toolkit designed specifically with restaurants in mind. It has everything you need to put Take Back the Lunch Break mission into action and make it your own. All it takes is a quick email sign up on the torfusa.com slash takebacklunch website to access our toolkit where you can unlock all the benefits of this campaign. Using new TORF digital print napkin technology, 
you can design and print custom napkins featuring the benefits of taking a lunch break. For example, a napkin can say, people who take lunch breaks are more likely to feel happy at work. This kind of interesting data and more can be found within the toolkit on our website. The fact is 75% of restaurant goers say establishments with custom print napkins care more about the customer experience. Imagine what we'll, they'll think if these napkins are promoting their well-being to boot. Visit Torque at the National Restaurant Show or on our website to learn more about digital print napkins. Also included in the toolkit are at a glance inserts for Torque Express Nap dispensers, which many of you know have clear advertising panels on the side to promote restaurant messaging. Simply choose one of our designs, customize the insert with your brand logo, print and place in dispensers around the restaurant. The beauty of this is restaurant customers will be reminded of how important taking a lunch break really is while they're eating. These same designs can also be displayed on your social media channels. Other promotional tools within the toolkit are social media posts and the best practices Skylar shared, along with a tip sheet for more creative ways you can promote Take Back the Lunch Break year round. We encourage you to make Take Back the Lunch Break your own to help change attitudes and behaviors about the lunch break once and for all. To learn more about how Torque takes back the lunch break and benefit your restaurant year round, join the movement, visit our website where you can download our restaurant toolkit and access social media templates for you to easily spread the word to your customers. And every operator who downloads the kit is automatically entered to win one of three $1,000 cash grants to fund free lunches for guests at your establishment on June 21st, National Take Back the Lunch Break Day. If you're interested, please visit our website, visit us at the NRA show, or email me at suzanne.cohen.com. All right, now we'll go ahead and take questions from the floor. Great, thank you. Thank you to Suzanne, Chelsea, and Skylar for your time today and sharing this really important information and opportunities in which restaurants can better engage with their communities and driving traffic um, through Take Back the Lunch movement. And with that, I am going to open it up for questions. If you do have a question, please feel free to type those in in your questions pane in your GoToWebinar control panel. And we'll give folks a few minutes to go ahead and submit those questions. We do have a couple of questions, so to get us started. And so, Skylar, I'm going to ask you a couple of social media related questions, if you wouldn't mind unmuting your audio. We have a question that really gets to, what are some of the best ways to capture engaging content for restaurants, um, whether that be through specific social media channels or other ways in which um, restaurants can, can, can really promote? Definitely. So. I think there are a few things you can do. Um, I actually am a consultant for a lot of restaurants and I, I do social media for them. And what we've realized is the best way is first establishing the restaurant's voice and who they want to appeal to. Um, obviously we want to appeal to everyone, but there always needs to be some consistency on what your restaurant does or you know who it is. So what I think is once you figure that out, how do you convey that visually? So I think number one, Food photos always do well, but you have to do it right. Your dish can be gorgeous, um, but you have to make people want to eat it through their phone. That's really the, why people engage with food content. So I think mix it up with some videos, like showing the food being, um, you know, played with. I don't know if that's the right word, but you know what I mean? Engaged with and then show photos that really get up in the food and make sure the lighting is always natural and bright in these photos because nothing is worse than a photo with flash of food it just it makes me cry um also behind the scenes on instagram stories people love to know what goes into making these beautiful dishes not just the final product so incorporating you know the chef into things get the chef to be the face of the kitchen and if you're an owner and you want to be involved and get start putting yourself out there and maybe do a demo on instagram stories every week do videos showing how things are made every week to get your, your viewers more interested. And also I think um, inviting influencers is a great idea 
to build your audience. Um, nothing has helped at least a lot of my clients more than engaging with influencers and having them produce content from the restaurant. So I would say those are the main things. That's great. We do have a question from the audience, um, somewhat related. How far in advance would you recommend a restaurant begin to promote Take Back Lunch Day? Is this for me? Like how, how do you think people should promote Take Back the Lunch Day? Um, I would say either you, Chelsea, or Suzanne, whoever, if you all three want to chime in, that'd be great. Yeah, I would say two or three weeks in advance. I mean, we'll give, share some information about taking that five-day challenge. So I know it takes a lot of planning up front to do it, but hopefully the toolkit will give you those posts that are ready to go and help you with it. Um, but just getting some awareness about it and encouraging people to bring coworkers or friends or use it as an opportunity to network is a great way to get folks excited and planning to to take advantage but really honestly every day should be take back the lunch break day well fear suzanne any additional thoughts there or sorry skylar i really I, yeah, I, I say yeah. sorry go ahead no i was just going to say i agree <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Two to three weeks is, is plenty of time, especially given a, a solid toolkit with all the marketing materials already in it. I mean, that's that's plenty of time. Great. Another question that we have, and Suzanne, maybe you can take this one first and um, tell me if you have any thoughts as an operator yourself. This question is, how important is price point compared to food quality or selection? Okay, that is out of my depth. <laughs> this is Suzanne. Uh, this is uh, this is Chelsea. Um, I'll just say first and foremost, I just do the social media. I leave that up to the people um, in my operations team to to figure it out. But I mean, we do get a lot of feedback, at least on Honey Grove social media channels. Our fare, um, they're commensurate to the quality of our food, and that's really what we're trying to reach, that, that um, equilibrium there, um, where the quality actually matches the price. So I, I personally think our prices are fair, um, especially considering that we use a lot of local produce. Um, all of our food is, is freshly made in-house. We don't have any freezers. So that's just my, um, my two cents here. If we had somebody from my operations team, they could talk your ear off about that. Great. Thank you. Suzanne, what type of restaurants would you say would benefit most by participating in Take Back the Lunch Break? So that's the beauty of this campaign. It's really, it's for all restaurants. Anyone who is open during the lunch hour can really benefit because, you know, as you know, people go to all types of restaurants for lunch. So I would encourage anyone who's open during that day part to take advantage of the campaign. Very good. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to submit those. If you do have a question after today's webinar, you can always email us at programming at winsightmedia.com, and we'll be happy to field additional questions to our presenters. I do have one other question, and Skylar, this one is probably best for you. With regards to various social media channels, say Instagram, for instance, what would you say are best practices for operators to really help drive that restaurant growth? So are you saying like operators, meaning whoever's running the restaurant social media? Yes. Um, well, I really think that, I mean, content is always king. Like I think having the best content is very important, like I said before. And I think inviting influencers in to capture content in exchange for a free meal is a very worthy investment. And this can, it can be anything from like two dishes to like a whole meal. Um, but that promotion is so helpful because like my clients have grown like thousands in weeks, you know, just by that. Um, another way to grow, what else? I honestly think those are the best in my opinion, for like an immediate result. But content is always the most important. I hope I know I said that before, but I, I really stand by that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you so much. Well, at this time, we don't have any other questions. 
I do want to again. Oh, hello. I do want to again thank Torque for sponsoring today's webinar. And again, we do ask for feedback with regards to today's program and suggestions on topics for future programs. So you will receive an email at the conclusion of the webinar with the link to the evaluation. And then again, we'll follow up this week with the recording as well. And we want to thank you all for your time. Thank you again, Suzanne, Chelsea, and Skylar. We really appreciate you bringing your experiences to this webinar and really talking about the importance of taking back lunch and opportunities for, for restaurant operators to do so. Thank you. Thanks, right, thanks. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.